Uh, Tom's playing career is very underrated, and he was the first quarterback in Raider history. He was an original Raider, and uh, obviously he went to Buffalo and Kansas City later, but he personified the AFL as a player. And then on top of that, he comes in, and Coach Madden gets a lot of credit, and he was a brilliant game day manager, but outside of Snake calling the plays in the game, Tom was the one that really ran that offense. Uh, he didn't have the title offensive coordinator, but essentially he was of the 70 Raiders that always had a way of pulling games out. And that was Tom in large extent and his understated style. He didn't get a lot of the credit. And then when he did ascend to the head coaching job, he won twice more. So I have no idea. I think there's a, a certain bias against, you know, how many X-Raiders you're going to put in. You know, I think there are more X-Raiders of the 70s in than the Steelers, and the Raiders won one that, in that time, and they won four. So there's a, a sentiment that, all right, enough of those guys. But you can't judge it that way. You have to look at each individual and just worthy or not worthy. To me, Tom Flores, when you look at his the, the totality of his career, and I didn't even get in the fact that he was the first Hispanic-American uh, head coach and won a Super Bowl and the boundaries that he opened and all the great Hispanics that have come and now played. J.P. Lossman of a Raider is Hispanic descent. Uh, obviously, Mark Sanchez. So many people play pro football because of Tom and Jim. And I think when you look at that, on top of all the accomplishments, you tell me why he's not in.